welcome everybody. I, uh, I, I'm, I appreciate the time and opportunity to present Caliber to you. Um, as I'm sure you could probably imagine, we will be making some forward-looking statements. So we do have this presentation up on our website, calibermining.com. Uh, do take the time to read through some of the forward-looking statements we have there. <clears throat> so as Arlen mentioned, uh, Caliber is um, a growing, in, growing into a mid-tier gold producer. Uh, the company started a number of years ago, but we acquired gold production in Central America in 2019. And subsequent to that point in time, we've done uh, some creative transactions to grow our production, but importantly as well to diversify our production into a, uh, into a quality mid-tier gold producer. And so what we're showing here is just a high level overview of who we're about at the moment. So, uh, <clears throat> so as you can see here, 2024 Caliber's gold production is 230 to 240,000 ounces uh, this year but a real focus <clears throat> on exploration. And I think it's really critical when looking at any resource company uh, that you may be evaluating for your portfolio is a, a, to have a focus on exploration to discover, expand, or find new resources. Because really, in my opinion, in our opinion, one of the greatest drivers of share price performance is success with the drill bit. And you can see here the caliber's investment this year is about 40 to $45 million of drilling, predominantly drilling uh, across our whole portfolio. <clears throat> At the end of September, we had about 200 million of cash and restricted cash. And uh, we are in the process of constructing a major new gold mine in Atlantic Canada called the Valentine Gold Mine. So Caliber at the end of 2023 uh, went through the process of acquiring Marathon Gold and closed that deal in January. So we've been advancing the project ever since. High level, uh, Valentine is a 5 million ounce measured, indicated and inferred uh, project in, in the central region of, uh, of Newfoundland. We're about 81% through construction now. Uh, we are fully funded to to bring that through to First Gold. First Gold is uh, right around the corner here, six months away, uh, Q2 of 2025. So that I believe that that will unlock a lot of value for our shareholders. And we are starting to see that. We have been seeing that through 2024, not only because of the price of, of gold increasing almost 30% this year, but also because of the, the transformational deal we did with Marathon to uh, become a a multi-asset, a multi-jurisdictional gold producer. <clears throat> so, so just uh, again, high level on, on Valentine. This is going to be approximately 195,000 ounce a year gold producer for the first 12 years of uh, what's defined uh, as a 14 year mine life. We believe it'll be extended beyond that, but that's what it was done, what was done in the 2022 feasibility study. Part of the reason we acquired that was because Marathon was 50% through construction and it, and it presented an opportunity where funding was, was required and we could step in as a producer, uh, acquire the company accretively, but we also saw tremendous exploration upside. And just there on the right, we've highlighted some of the <clears throat> initial drill results that have come out of, uh, out of the drilling program we've done in 2024 so far, and there's more results to come, so stay tuned for that. But importantly, in addition, in a, and importantly, this diversification of jurisdiction is critical. Now with this asset coming online next year, fit over 50% of our net asset value is going to be coming out of North America. So that's Nevada and, and, and Canada. And I think from a, from a, particularly from a, I would say all investors, but an institutional investor approach, they like to see multi-asset diversified portfolio and having assets in Canada this has become a premier location. We've seen recent transactions, for example, uh, Goldfields recently taking it on Cisco, a Cisco mining for $2.2 billion. So they're located in Canada as well. So you can see there's a track record and other deals in addition to that, <clears throat> where Canada is demanding a premium for some of these either development stage or in construction or producing quality assets like uh, like we have here at Valentine. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our team. So uh, our chief executive officer, Darren Hall, has been in the business for many, many years, really focused on the operations. 
so prior to joining Caliber in 2019, Darren was a uh, chief operating officer with our same group uh, at New Market Gold. And some of those uh, that are watching here today, some of you that are watching may have recalled that company. We acquired gold production in Australia. Uh, through the drill bit, we discovered one of the highest grade underground gold mines in the world. We then went on to uh, to merge that, that business and that company with Kirkland Lake Gold, which then uh, had a tremendous run and went up about 10 times where we closed that deal off at in 2017. So shareholders did incredibly well. And again, I'll credit uh, the team there at, uh, at Newmarket, Doug Forrester and Blaine Johnson, that are both uh, founders of Caliber as well. But the vision was to acquire gold production, reinvest into the, those assets, and uh, predominantly through exploration. And uh, we were successful at doing that. So uh, that resulted in, a again, a multi-asset, multi-jurisdictional gold producer with about four to 500,000 ounces after combined with uh, Kirkland Lake to do extraordinary share price returns. And, and that's really what our focus here is at Caliber. Uh, we've taken a bit of a different path. We have been the consolidator or acquirer. We're now growing to that 400 to 500,000 ounce a year production profile. And I believe there's a tremendous opportunity for shareholders, not only because of the gold price performance, but because of what we're doing from an exploration and also from a acquiring quality assets to bring into the portfolio perspective. So just looking at a few um, industry metrics here versus our peers, uh, I think we present a very compelling opportunity. You can see our market capitalization there in US dollars. This is a very recent chart updated about a week ago. But you can see that uh, uh, when you look at our peer group that are in that four to 500,000 ounce a year production profile, you can see there's an opportunity for Caliber to re-rate even higher than what we've done so far this year as we unlock the value not only from Valentine, but through the whole portfolio's um, uh, exploration opportunities, as well as production profile. Uh, a whole overview of the company, over 4 million ounces in reserve, uh, well over uh, 11 million ounces in resources across all the portfolio. Uh, obviously, the priority assets at the moment are the producing assets in, in Nicaragua. That's where we got our start. We've unlocked a, a tremendous amount of value by operating a hub and spoke operation there. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we followed that up with the Fiore Gold acquisition, which is a heap leach operation, smaller heap leach operation in Nevada, which came with a Golden Eagle project in Washington, uh, over 2 million ounces of measured and indicated resources in that project. And so you can see we've been adding assets, uh, not only increasing the quality, but also diversifying the product. Uh, to have a well-rounded uh, portfolio of assets in different jurisdictions, uh, but as well uh, increasing that production profile throughout the uh, throughout the transaction. So accretively adding assets to the portfolio. Uh, speaking of that, with the inclusion of the Valentine Gold mine coming on stream next year, and it won't be at a full rate next year, but at an annualized run rate, you can see there based on some analyst consensus, we have one of the best growth profiles within our peer group, uh, a growth profile of over 90% over here with the inclusion of Valentine. Then there's additional upside upon that, upon looking at the portfolio and unlocking value from other assets in Nicaragua because we've got surplus capacity at one of our facilities, et cetera. So it does transform the business in a pretty significant way. So um, some, of, some of you that are watching here today may have been following Caliber over the last little while, and you've probably seen some of the updates we've put out on the company. But I think it's important to, uh, to sort of drive this home. When we acquired this asset from Marathon Gold, um, based on our due diligence and research, there was about 60%, about maybe a little over 60% of the project had been fully engineered. However, the, the project construction was about 50%. We've now brought that through to about 60, sorry, to about 98, 99% engineered. So a really good full understanding of engineering. And of course, advance the construction based on the images you can see there. We're at about 81% complete on the project now. And um, we're in the final stages here of, of putting everything together. All the major components are on site. 
So from a scheduling perspective, we don't have any concerns regarding schedule. It's all bolting the bits together now. And, um, and, and, and on that, we would imagine to be through a mechanical completion as well as uh, electrical instrumentation, probably by early Q1 of next year, which puts us in a great position for first gold in Q2. What's also really important with the Valentine mine and this birthing of a new, a new asset in Canada is putting together a solid operating team. So we've started that progress this year. We've got a, a lead in country, uh, Jason Sear, who is ex Barrick. Uh, Jason is VP operations for Canada. So he's, he's assembled a strong team there as well. So we're well ahead of the curve having that uh, leadership team in place already. We've just recently added a chief operating officer to our, our whole business, David Schumer, who will be overseeing all assets in the portfolio. Uh, David used to work with Darren at Newmont. Um, and I think we'll add a, a, a significant focus on operations, delivery, and uh, ensuring that we adhere to our commitments, but also do that with a, a good focus on efficiencies and cost effectiveness. So you can see a high level there based on the feasibility study, approximately 200,000 ounces a year. Uh, based on the study, again, about $1,000 all-in sustaining cost. I think that's probably maybe a little bit optimistic. As we go through the work here, we would probably expect to be somewhere closer to the probably a, a, a $1,200 plus range for an all-in sustaining cost. We're working through all those numbers now. We'll be providing guidance to the market for 2025 and beyond. But but, you know, based on the timeline of that and where we're at now, there's additional people, there'll be additional costs that go into that. So we have to make sure that uh, we factor all of that into uh, to, to, to the marketplace. Um, and then you can see there, we are funded to get through the construction period into first gold. So we're in a very good position there. Not only are we funded with the restricted cash and cash we have in the balance sheet, but we're also uh, expecting a very strong fourth quarter uh, from the existing operations here, just last Friday, we guided that we'd be uh, probably our strongest. It will be will be our strongest quarter of the year, at about seventy to eighty thousand ounces of production in Q4. So uh, we'll we'll obviously add to our our balance sheet and strengthen the balance sheet with uh, with that additional production profile uh, coming on. What is exciting too here at the same time with Valentine is is that we're un we're understanding more about the project as we as we work through, but. We are actually looking at the, the project now with a larger phase two approach potentially. So we're doing some technical studies now that uh, give us an indication that, it, that we could possibly push throughput from what was envisioned in the feasibility study at 4 million tons, possibly up to four and a half to 5 million tons with some work that we're doing. Um, and that's, uh, I, I think that's uh, obviously a great opportunity for us. Uh, because of the expiration potential we see across this uh, this land package, which we'll talk about, and it is uh, pretty significant. So I'll turn to the next slide there and talk a little bit about this exploration and some of the de-risking we've done uh, on the Valentine project. So um, again, since acquired it, we've done a lot of work on the construction, the engineering, putting the right people, human capital in place to be able to deliver this asset. But we've also been doing a lot of infill drilling in the pits. So we, we would call this ore control or grade control drilling. And so far at the leprechaun pit here in the left-hand side or right-hand side of the screen, but left-hand side of the, of the project, the leprechaun pit and the marathon pit, they have, uh, they have both demonstrated a, a very good reconciliation. In, in fact, both are uh, reconciling uh, favorably to what was in the in the 2022 reserve and uh, both for different reasons we found more ore tons in the leprechaun pit and actually it's bleeding outside of the pit giving us a very good indication that there's good upside opportunity along the major shear zone which hosts the mineralization where there has been no drilling actually you can see the long section at the bottom shows the leprechaun pit wide open to this Frank zone that we've identified and it's been identified previously that we're drilling at now. So is there a potential to connect the two? I, I think it's there's good potential. We have to do the drilling. We're doing that drilling now. We've got three rigs operating on the property. So very exciting to see what that exploration upside potential looks like. Um, 
you know, Valentine is an under, actually is an underexplored gold camp. And I'll tell you why is because, you know, when we look at Valentine and we look at the evolution of the discoveries over the years, it really started about 2011. You can see a picture here of the leprechaun area. So leprechaun today is now an open pit, but that led to the discovery. These outcropping rocks led to that discovery in 2011. Marathon was discovered in 2015, 16. And the team at Marathon were going ahead with, a, with that two pit mine plan and, and permitting of that. And as they were doing that and doing condemnation drilling in between here, they discovered the Barry pit as well. So exploration has been ongoing there since 2011 to now, call it 15 years. Uh, but this is only six kilometers. This dotted line here is a shear zone or a fault that hosts that mineralization. There's, this has only been tested for about six kilometers of what has been mapped out a 32 kilometer belt. So a tremendous exploration package and, and tremendous opportunity. When you look at a geological setting like this in Ontario or in Quebec, a uh, property like that would be, I think, probably over 100 years explored and very likely in similar geology to what we have here, probably 40 to 60 plus million ounces of gold. So we do believe there's a tremendous opportunity here from an exploration upside perspective. Uh, obviously, getting a little close to time here, 20 minutes is, is tight to run through everything, but part of the reason and part of the thesis for acquiring Valentine in the development stage project is because Caliber put themselves in a very good balance sheet position. So beginning of 29, uh, beginning end of 2019, we acquired these gold assets from, from B2 Gold, who became a very large shareholder of the company. And we unlocked a lot of value through this acquisition. So 2019, we acquired the, the B2 Gold assets in Nicaragua, Limon and Libertad. At the time, we were envisioning about 50 to 70,000 ounces of annual production. At the time that we acquired the assets, we only had about 250,000 ounces of reserves. But you can see the bar chart on the right-hand side of the screen there. We've had tremendous success through the exploration uh, programs that we put in place. We have increased reserves over 300%. Importantly, because of the way Darren put a, a, a new hub and spoke operating strategy into uh, in, to, to, to be delivering this production, we've seen a 28%, on average, a 28% annualized growth rate. So it's been a, a, a tremendous last five years for us, setting ourselves up such that prior to the Valentine acquisition, we had no debt. Uh, we were in a very good position from a cash perspective, over $100 million of cash on the balance sheet. So that allowed us to look further afield to see what we could do that could be accretive for our shareholders would led to the Valentine transaction. Again, I think this is a transformational deal for us to catapult us from being uh, a junior gold producer into a mid-tier gold producer and, and getting the re-rating from the size, but also from the diversification and quality of assets as well. I won't go into too much in terms of how we operate Nicaragua, but needless to say, it's a number of spokes. Um, we've gone from permit to plant in 18 months in country, of course, following all international rules and regulations and the similar mining legislation that you've seen uh, in many different jurisdictions. Uh, so we go through full EIA processes, et cetera, to, uh, to get these mines permitted. But of course, each of these different mines doesn't require tailings. It doesn't require a mill at each one of these sites. So we utilize the excellent infrastructure and country to haul that material into either one of the process plants. Uh, I briefly touched on some exploration in Nicaragua, and I won't go into too much detail given the time, but we are having great success with the drill bit. We've got a total of 13 rigs operating in Nicaragua right now. Here are some of the drill results um, from, from the area at Limon that we've been focused on because we've had such good success there. We've grown reserves significantly there. We are finding new deposits year over year. In fact, this year alone, We've made a new discovery, and I'll point that out in the middle of the screen here. Uh, we've drilled 13 grams over five meters right at surface, five over five, five over 10. So we continue to drill there and follow up on that new discovery. So it, it, it leads itself to some, possibly some good resource expansion uh, at the end of the year when we do our year-end uh, resource and reserve calculation. 
again, getting very close to probably over time here, Arlen, but I'll just wrap up with Nevada. Uh, we acquired this uh, heap, smaller heap leach operation in Nevada. And if we take a step back, uh, we would really look at Nevada as a, as a cash flowing exploration play. And in fact, if you look at the whole company, really what we are is we're explorers for gold and we have cash flow to, to fund that. And, um, and, and, and as we've talked about here during the presentation, that cash flow is going to start increasing, not only because of the price of gold, but also because of the, uh, the creative deal we did to acquire Valentine. So we are having success here in Nevada. We do generate cash there from the, from the pan operation. That's about 30 to 40,000 ounce a year of production. Uh, but we are also having success expanding reserves and resources. And uh, there is a very compelling opportunity with another development stage project there called Gold Rock, uh, about four to 500,000 ounces in resources. And we're looking at another opportunity here where we could utilize the pan processing infrastructure and team and maybe unlock some value by hauling Gold Rock material over to pan. Technical studies are still underway. Permitting is well advanced. I think we're almost complete permitting of the Gold Rock project. But needless to say, it does present a, an opportunity for mine life expansion, potentially an opportunity for production increase, but really mine life expansion there at, uh, in Nevada. But a great land package, 220 square kilometer land package. And as many people know here, uh, Nevada is ranked very high in the, the Fraser Institute from a jurisdictional perspective, not only because of the, the solid uh, mining legislation there, but also because of the excellent geology that the, uh, the state has. So with that, I guess I'll, uh, I'll wrap up again, Caliber, a growing mid-tier gold producer, a significant transformational year this year with the construction of Valentine and then next year with the uh, production coming from our Valentine mine in Canada, but also extensive exploration and stay tuned for regular updates from the company as we, as we often do is we, we'll put out regular drill results to inform our shareholders regularly of how things are going through the investment of their dollars into exploration and to hopefully lead to uh, net asset value expansion and lead to share price performance uh, versus our peer group. So I guess with that, Arland, uh, I'll pass it back over to you and, and open it up if there's time for questions. Yeah, right on. Um, yeah, Ryan, we don't have a, a ton of time for questions here, but I, I want you to run over your margins on that re-rate opportunity of Valentine. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point, right? Like, um, you know, we look at the gold price today. Let's use today as spot. I mean, what are we, 2730? Can you lock in those prices right now? Well, I, I mean, you you can. You, you can lock in those prices. I think a lot of, I think of a lot of uh, shareholders are, they like the upside potential of what could be beyond 2700, of course, <laughs> right? Um, We're all gold bugs here. Everybody's a little bit greedy that way, right? But but importantly, you can. You know, we can put prepaids in, in place for a percentage of our production. And there's some, and we did that earlier this year, uh, and it's logical to do stuff like that, especially going through a major build, absolutely, like we're doing at Valentine's. So, uh, could we do something like that in the future? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's not only prudent, but it's probably reasonable to think to to lock in some of this twenty seven hundred or or higher because they use a future curve. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, absolutely, margins are fantastic, and even even Ar Arlen, if you look at the industry average for gold companies these days. I think we're talking all in sustaining costs around 15, 1600 bucks an ounce, right? So, so here, here, here's a company that has seen increased uh, cost basis, but we still have a thousand to $1,100 per ounce margins that at current cool. prices. And, and nobody believes that, you know, based on the devaluation of currencies around the world and geopolitical events that are happening, that, that gold prices are going to go, it, they might have a pullback, but they're, heck, they're, they're definitely not going to go that much lower. Um, and a lot of a lot of banks now are forecasting fire, higher uh, than than spot gold prices. Not not only this year but next year as well. So, yeah. So uh, Ryan, um, on the panel that we just had, we just really talked about like who are the value creators in the market. Um, and I just want to say congratulations again on your success. I know it's not over yet, um, but that's one of the best charts I see in the market. Um, you guys have executed flawlessly. And, you know, Blaine Johnson, Darren Hall, and um, Doug Forrester, and you have been a very consistent group in the in the sector over the years, creating shareholder value. So congratulations. And yeah, no, I appreciate that. I mean, it's one of these yeah. things, it's one of these things where, yes, you could deviate from what you're good at. And what we've been good at over the years is putting together good gold deals, reinvesting in those gold deals, 
through the ups and the downs. We all have been through the down markets and hate it. And sometimes people pivot and get into AI or they get into cannabis or whatever it is. You know, uh, fortunately, we've stuck through it and uh, we've been able to, to acquire quality assets and people that can unlock value in great gold markets like this. Yeah, there's actually one quick question, if you could answer quickly. How has it been able to find talent to build Valentine Mine? Actually, surprisingly, it we because of, I think, our quality team, what we've been able to do and demonstrate to the market, the, 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 that was a concern of ours. I'll, I'll be completely honest. That was a major concern of ours going into the bit, uh, continuing on with the build. Um, but I think given Darren's track record as a quality operator, I mean, he was a guy at Newmont that was known not only within Newmont, but the industry as somebody that can optimize assets, lower costs, increase throughput and production. So he, he got a very good reputation from that perspective. Yeah. Um, and we were able to attract people not only because of, Hey, you get to move back to Canada or, Hey, you get to move back to Newfoundland where you're from instead of doing your in and out rotations. So, yeah. uh, so it's helped. And we, you know, the, the, the most important piece of this is getting the leadership team in place. We have two, maybe three X resumes for every job that we will be able to provide, uh, when it comes to the whole entire, uh, operating staff. So, no, I think the, and, and of course, as you know, I and mean, we, we, we all know this, it's, it's the people behind it and it's the leadership of the operations that will drive efficiencies and effectiveness, but it will also drive the quality of talent for the whole operating team. So uh, it, it was a concern, but fortunately, we've been able to attract it. And I think it has a lot to do with Darren's track record, his pedigree, yep. um, and the whole team, you know, for example, as you mentioned, Doug and Blaine and, and their track record as well. So for sure. Hey, Ryan, uh, great to see you. We got to kick you out of the rooms. Got the next Sounds one good. coming up, um, but we'll we'll see you around the streets. And uh, again, keep at her. Thanks, Arlen. Appreciate, appreciate yep. it.